<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hollywood Tales. My name is Ahmed Ahmed. We are here at Jam in the Van. Our guest today is Sarah Halstead. We'll Hi, get, everyone. Get to her in a second. My good buddy Marcus Redman is back. Hello. And Blake my co host, Barty. Blake Barty. Um, thank you, Justin, our sound engineer, videographer, editor. And to everybody here at Jam in the Van, which makes this happen, this is the Hollywood Tale. Tales podcast where we tell sneaky, slimy, dirty, funny stories, Hollywood stories, which we'll get to in the end. But um, first of all, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for, Thanks for the time. invite. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Um, this is cool. We met through Craig Shoemaker. We did. Right? Isn't we that did. technically how we yeah. met? Yeah, during in the heart of, of COVID, the pandemic. Like, like while the we, everyone master. was quarantined. I knew who you were. I had seen you in like posters. <laughs> and and stuff you like too. That. Yeah, of course. But um, yeah, we actually met through Craig Shoemaker. Mm-hmm. If you don't know who Craig Shoemaker is, he's a legend comedian. He's been around for ages. He's really one he of helps the best. a lot of pro- comics. He's kind of a producer in his own right. He is. And how did you guys meet? Um, we met through a booking agent. She mm. set us up. For me to be to work with him in tandem at his shows, right? Because you feature for him, I do a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we met, and then you did a couple of my shows, and you have your own podcast. I've done a lot of your shows. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're and you've done my shows. Fuck. I know. I have. Yeah. The bottle That's great. bottle shock. Bottle shock. Yeah. Which you, uh, you just had another sold out one. I did. So tell us about that. Actually, let's go back to the beginning. How did you get okay. into stand up comedy? Um, I got into stand up like a lot of comics through happenstance. And you can talk to them too if you want. Okay. Hey, what's They're up? They're here. Okay. I thought this was just about, no. I just want this. This is Damn. why I said yes to the invite. Just one on one. I mean, I could beat traffic with my if dream we need man, to. man, Ahmed Ahmed. Okay, okay, okay. And you guys too. Oh, hi. How's it going? Okay. Hey, hey Blake. Um, Sarah, how's it going? Hey, hey over there. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> nice All right. Here. So uh, so like, I got into stand-up. I was an actor first, and uh, and then I took a hiatus from acting. While I was acting, I was doing a lot of improv in New York City. That's Where are you from originally? Uh, I'm from Flint, Michigan, born and oh, raised. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And I went to school in New York and got into the, the drama program in New York. And uh, while I was acting, I got into improv. And I was like the the one woman in sketch comedies at Caroline's on Broadway. You know how they'd have to have like the one ditzy girl. That was right. me. That was always my role. Like he was the token uh, black guy. <laughs> you were the, the token. token. I was always the ditzy girl <laughs> in these ske- sketch comedies, and I, I did really enjoy it. But I never did stand up. And then I uh, fell in love, moved to Miami uh, to follow my husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> had to, way, had to follow me, that guy. <laughs> who, by the way, if I, if I remember correctly, you told me you guys had a really successful like wine distribution. We did, yeah. We, we, were, we right. were really good together. Um, I got into the wine industry, champagne industry, and he was in wine. And I ended up doing that for 12 years in Miami. Miami is the champagne capital of the world, by is the it? way. They it do pop bottles. Very busy. They pop bottles. It, I have insane stories, stories <laughs> of just absolute opulence and sanity, um, but just grew tired of it after a while right. and was feeling very devoid of all things creative and uh, divorced that guy. Um, and uh, it, after after we divorced, Why? I... Why did you divorce? Uh, we divorced because we were always traveling, and we never caught up. We, we, would, we would say to each other before we left the house, we'd say, okay, uh, I want to hear about your trip upon your return and I want to talk about this and that, you know, things that were happening. And we just never would. And then before we knew it, we were like backlogged of like a year. You owe me a thousand of stories. Like, yeah. You're like, I don't like, know I you no anymore. I had no idea who this person was, <laughs> what they were doing. And, and it was mutual. I mean, I was just, it takes two to get in. And it takes two to get out, mm-hmm. absolutely. And we're cordial today. Um, wonderful thing. I want wonderful things to happen for him. He's great. We're friends. Uh, and then I, um, I just realized I, that I, I was just unhappy with with everything. I was unhappy with my career. I was unhappy with where I was living. I didn't feel like I was a fit in Miami, although it's a really cool city. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like I fit in. So that's a tough city to live in, Miami. It is. It's to really visit, fun to visit, fun. but to live. That's yeah, like I had one week, in. one week there, and I was like, uh, I gotta go. Yeah, it's like living. It's like Vegas. It's like it's just too. It's, it's too very much. similar to Vegas, uh, and much. I had a lot of 
you know, stuff from the outside looking in, you would think I had this perfect life. I had a waterfront property and, you know, just, I was very, very comfortable financially and was in the, cha- I, wor- I was the regional director for Laurent Perrier Champagne for the mm. Southeast of the U.S. and traveled to Champagne in France or, to, you know, Paris multiple times a year. And it was just this really incredible life, but I just was so unhappy. And so I quit. And I sold Grass my home. Grass is always greener. And I sold all my belongings. Yes, isn't it though? And uh, and I rented a thirty foot RV and uh, got in it and started driving. Mm. There I am. And then RVs when you and cats. That was five and a half years ago. <laughs> Hence RVs and cats, my comedy special. It's coming yeah. together, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blake knows. Mm. Um, it was. You know, it's so funny. It felt brave, but. I find that the story is kind of common. There are a lot of people who give up everything. Sure. To, you know, like the story, yeah. I mean, it, it is. Yeah, it did take it did take cojones to do it. Yeah. And I was scared. But you I'm, still, I'm still scared. But you, still, <laughs> you still dabble in the wine industry a little bit, right? I do. No? I do. And, I, you know, it's, it's just a part of me. I've yeah. tried to get out of it for years, but I can't. I've been doing it for 22 years now. They, they keep pulling you back. And it's in. just th- this thing that I just know so well. And You're I, good at it. I and love it. Make, I'm probably good make at good it. money. Yeah. 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 So... Hey, lunch is still, on you. It's still an intrinsic clink. <laughs> it is. <laughs> wine for all my friends. Yeah, right? But a lot of comics don't drink. It's a real pain oh, in my I'm ass. Oh, I'm a wino. I'm t- send the wine. Send all right. I should have brought some. That's not true. That's not true. Well, no, that is true. Uh, some I know a lot of comics that don't drink, but they have other vices. Yes, that's Food, true. Food, sex, mm-hmm. porn, fucking... You know, so sex and smoking. porn are not together in the same category. Yes. Well, sex, sex and porn is different. Sex with someone else. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then you get out here five and a half years ago, and you're in your RV. I'm in my RV. That you're living and in. And my cat. That you're living in. I'm living in. And where do you par- like? Where do you where do you I, park? Where I all these know. other people are parking. Exactly. All over the place. I did. I did no, that for a while. No, but five and a half years ago, the homeless scene wasn't really that. I hung out in Austin, Texas for a while. If you have an RV, you're not homeless. I was in a park called the Pecan. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It was it was a pretty it was a cool nice RV. It was thirty feet. When you got to when you got to LA, where was the first place you like posted up? Like where in LA? Um, Topanga Canyon. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, nobody can really fuck with you up there. Yeah, I did that, and then it just got really. It just Hippie. were it, you by yourself? It just got hard, and it's actually really the irony is it's really expensive RV to living. Live in an RV, really? So expensive. I gave it up for you know an apartment in Beverly Hills, <laughs> and that Beverly Hills apartment was cheaper really? <laughs> than yeah. RV Why, living. Just because the gas and the yes, upkeep and yes. all this like drainage, and, and all that's that when you know like five years ago, five and a half years ago, gas was not as bad as it is today, but it wasn't good. And you sold it, I guess, right? Well, I was renting it. Oh. That's one of the reasons why I, sh- if I owned it, probably would have been <coughs> a little more economical. But I, I, yeah, I got rid of it and moved to Beverly Hills because I was naive and dumb, didn't know where to live, and did that for a couple of years. And, and w- what was your first job out here? Uh, my first job was uh, a a commercial for Ford. I did really well commercially right away. You didn't have like a part time job. You were no. You, you had money nope. saved I, up. Yes, or exactly. Got yes. It, got it. And then I just started booking commercials. Oh. Yeah. Well, you have that very all American commercial vibe. I guess maybe. Yeah. And I you was... were probably making a lot of money because residuals. I don't know if they do that anymore. I think they just buy you out. Lately, I could be wrong. But back then, they buy you out now. They, right. Mm-hmm. But back then, mm-hmm. if you, I had friends of mine. Remember Jimmy Lane. We had a buddy of ours that was booking commercials left and fucking right. He was in everything. Yeah. And he and the residuals is what made him all the money. Mm-hmm. But they don't do that anymore. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all went to Chris non-union Weber. and it's really difficult to make a living as a commercial actor now. Mm. And then when the uh, and I but I would book, you know, I've I've booked over 98 commercials in the past Six and a half whoa, years. Whoa. Stop bragging. Yeah, we got a commercial star. Can we? <laughs> what, can we <laughs> Not to brag, but can, we, can you name a couple? A race. Okay, <laughs> that's why I'm showing off my knees. Can you? You look. <laughs> you look fantastic, <laughs> by the way. You the best uh, knees for any. You look fantastic. Woman over forty in the world. Thank you, you look Crape-a-race. fantastic. I love the dress, <laughs> the, nice. the boots. It's very kind of like metro <laughs> western. <laughs> Uh, Metro yeah, Western LA. Threw a little something together uh, for the show. 
Do you have like photos of some of the commercials you were in so we can maybe throw them up here? I don't know. Oh, uh, I have. Yeah, they're really embarrassing. Something. And it's like I take these jobs. Some, I, I just would do it for the for the money and the experience. I wanted to get fluid with being in front of the camera again because mm. I was an actor a long time ago and I had in to New get York. up to speed exactly. Right. So what's it, the it difference? Really, like L.A. New York. W- um, what do you like? Tell us the difference. You tell the audience the difference. Of, there's more work here. There's just exponentially more work in L.A. And everyone told me back then, move to L.A., and I didn't listen because I felt too far away from my mom and dad in Mm. Michigan. I didn't want, you know, I was just kind of like a a mama's girl and daddy's girl, and I just didn't want to be, I just was too scared to move so far. And I would have ended up in porn, absolutely. (laughs) Had I, I, I was so naive. What would you have called yourself? I was just, okay, I wasn't naive. I was dumb. What would you have called? I was just a dumb girl. What would be your name if you were a porn star? Um, Sadie. She already knew that really quick. <laughs> she didn't do porn, but she did a commercial for porn. <laughs> Don't I kind of look like a Sadie? <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing because I know a woman that oh, you, Sadie. Yeah. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. It was um, such a... It was, it was the way she said it. Sadie. Yeah. Her timing, her delivery. My name is Sadie. Um, but 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 you're in, but you trained as an oh, don't actor. Act in like New you York. don't have your porn name, Marcus. We all Blake. The, we call him Predator. <laughs> See, Frosty what? Frosty Dover. Frosty Dover. Frosty Dover. It's your, it's your first pet, and, and, and the name of the street that you grew up. In. Oh, I thought it was a slushy from Seven Eleven. First pet. <laughs> Frosty Dover sounds like something. Some the latest. Pet. Oh really? You know what mine oh, okay. would be? Mine would be Sapo Celeste. Ooh. We had a German shepherd named Sapo, and I grew up on Celeste Drive. So Sapo, yeah. Sapo Celeste. Yeah, that's the I don't that, know, that, Celeste. That, is, that, that doesn't really know, sound really sexy. No. no. I mean, it's no Frosty Dover. So you're, when you, you trained as an actor in New York, right? Yes. So you know the old and saying, then, as a comic or an actor, you go there, you go to New York to build an act or build your thing, and then you go to L.A. to sell it, right? So when you're saying there's more work here, <clears throat> there's more like commercial, there's more shit to do as opposed to like people really trying to train or be a comic or an actor, right? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, there are a lot of Don't there you think are, there's a different, like the New York comedy just, scene is so much, so it's much really different, different from LA. It's so different from LA. Like people are just and working out there as opposed to LA has this like little clicky, gossipy, backstabby, climby. climby yeah. Network. Slimy. What are you doing? How'd you get that spot? Oh, who's the booker for that? Oh, how'd you wish it was so so? And you see so and so, like I know you know, you know. <laughs> you know I mean, the, I, old, the old joke because when a comic says, "Hey man, uh, I got tickets to Guns and Roses," and the other comic goes, "Who books that?" <laughs> <laughs> um, a friend took me to see Tim Dillon at the Brea Improv, Improv last month. I haven't month. seen him. Is he funny? Really funny. I've seen him clips. And uh, but I didn't know who he was, and uh, now I know. And the, it was a sold out show. For, not to give him a pl- like he needs a plug. But the whole I wasn't laughing, and he was crushing. And my friend, who isn't a comic, said, "What's wrong?" Is that? But because I was so preoccupied with how did he book the room? <laughs> how did he sell this many seats? Where, where uh, did What's he give it on the plug? Exactly. Angle? I was just so. You're like taking like, notes. How does he have this draw? Not even listening. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, comics do that, especially because you're a producer, and I'm, you know, I'm a producer. So we we don't look at shows the same way as most comics would look at a show, we right? Look at it for Probably, more like a, you know, lights, sound, everything, <clears throat> security. Yeah, we do. You know, yeah. Uh, Blake, you know, we've done some some handful of shows together. He's helped me on and produce and this, that, and the other thing, and. I think people don't realize that it's just a lot of legwork of oh, so much, especially now because it's so competitive. Yes, like there's a lot of comedy going on right now in LA. Simultaneously, don't you think? in the same building, there's a lot of comedy going right, on. Right, right. When you're doing, I, I do my show at the Improv, and there they have two rooms. Right. So there's a show right next to mine. So I, I this last show, I was competitive with the show next to me. Mm. Or they were com- anyway. I probably shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> but yeah, we can, gets, <laughs> we, can ed- we can edit this. It's very competitive. No, you don't have to edit anything. But do you? But, do you? But you produce your own shows because what? You don't have like a team that gets you booked and does it for you, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, yes. No. Like most people, <laughs> no, because I think no, because a lot of people yeah. and look, I'm I'm a better producer than I am a comic. That's just you know, it's put it, let it be known. But 
I, I think you're a very good comic. I have let it be known. Uh, let, known. It, let it be known. Let it be known. Loan. Let it be known. I I I like the idea of having some control of how the show moves and how it it's produced and booked and mm -hmm. the environment and. Remember that show in um, Huntington Beach at Cruisers? Yeah, sea so legs that got, so beautiful. No, not Sea Legs, which, uh, oh, by Cruisers. the way, the May 13th, yeah, you were there, Blake. Friday, May 13th, Axis of Evil reunion tour at Vampirite. Um, With karaoke afterwards? At the Cruisers bar. <laughs> we They canceled <laughs> the show there because customers, the regulars there, were complaining uh, that they didn't want to be shushed if they were talking during a comedy show. Like I was, you know me, I was walking around going. Oh, it was great! Right? I talk about it. Jen Sturger was on my podcast, and we talked about that night and how you completely t like kicked everybody out <laughs> that was talking. But then it ended up being a great show. You take mm. control because that's what you do. You have to as the producer. Well, the staff, I mean, there were like, rude they're, people. They're, you know, there's no security. There's no staff. Like I'm the one stop shop. Like it all goes kind of on, on my shoulders. <clears throat> I can't go tell. The chef, hey, can you come out here and help me fucking get rid of this guy or whatever? So I end up being you like the bouncer. You, you did what you're the bad Blake, cop. Blake was there every night. It was a fucking shit show every week. But they decided, hey, um, our customers, you know, we have a lot of regulars that come every Thursday. <clears throat> they don't. They prefer not to be shushed. So we're gonna stop comedy. And I was like, isn't this, like, a sh like this is the comedy show. You're supposed to shush. Why don't they come another night then when you're not there? That's what I'm saying. That's crazy. It's <sighs> so rude. It could have been a beautiful thing. It could have been a cool room. It had a lot of, there was a lot of negative, like, vibe. Like, every week, I almost got in a fight with somebody. Oh, that's, yeah. It just wasn't set up right. They didn't not put a in. fight, but I would, like, so tap somebody no on the there. shoulder and say, hey, no. do you mind keeping it down? It was a free show. Nobody respects free. That's the problem with free. Nobody respects free. Free yeah. comedy, free food, free drinks, mm -hmm. free sex, free anything. Nobody respects that. I it. respect free sex. <laughs> Not on the first night. <laughs> so you so you charge now? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for exposing me. Uh, <laughs> to see a meta med, you have to pay nine ninety nine per stream. <clears throat> no, Sapo Sapo <laughs> Celeste. Oh, Sapo Celeste. Uh. Pardon me, Sapo Celeste. Get it right, sister. Get Ooh. it right. Ladies um, and gentlemen, Sapo Celeste. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to chime in and ask lovely chica -bow, chica -bow. Sarah Halstead any questions? Because I have a thousand of them. Marcus, you have me mine. You guys are bored already. How about my story is so common. But, I'm trying not. I'm trying to incorporate everyone. That's what podcasts. My body language went from this well, to no, this. That's, that's what podcasts are about. No, I had, I had two I, questions really quickly. Okay, so you <coughs> so so you set up your own show. I set up my own uh, shows. Yes. And then you set up your own podcast. Yes. As well. So I have a. Did monthly you do it in show. your house or at a studio? I, I do it at a studio now. Oh. I had it in my house for a while, and I just didn't like how I had to clean before they arrived. Right. And then what? I have to clean. What's your they podcast? Because <laughs> like, I don't want to ask people to take off their shoes, like you know, like so. It's just uh, drinking during business hours. That's right. That's right. So, what, so what led you? What led you into the podcast? Like, what was like? That I just, I, well, I enjoy it a lot, and I started my pod, my first podcast in 2017, uh, and it was really successful, but I didn't realize how successful it was. And what was that called? It was called Drinking During Business Hours. Oh. And it got new and noteworthy from iTunes like within the first, I think, three months. Damn. And, uh, but I, I didn't understand the... This was when podcasts weren't as overly saturated was as they are today. Was this post Mar Mark Maron? It was well, Because he, he was kind of the first guy, it wasn't was it? It was post Mark Maron. Um, it was still like podcasts definitely were catching on, mm. but not to where it is today. Right. Um, and then Comedy Store offered me their basement to do a podcast in their basement with them producing. And I thought, well, Comedy Store... As I mean that that ought to like really open a lot of doors, yeah. and it did relationship wise, but not analytic wise. Yeah, it was I, really the, funny. Yeah, I, I noticed their podcasts don't get a lot of for, for some reason they'll get a I lot know of they podcasts. Have. Yeah, so a lot of, uh, so that and, and then uh, Daryl <coughs> Hammond approached me and wanted to do a I podcast together. I love Daryl, and we did that for a little while, and that was called the Summit, and that was a live podcast at the Improv. Mm. 
and um, and it was political. It was more him than me. I kind of my my role was like that Pollyanna mm. uh, with politics, and it was funny. And, and then COVID hit, mm. so I decided. Well, I like podcasting, but really, I want to just go back to the one that was successful. Mm and revamp it, but things have changed a lot where, and you know this, and you, you're on it. I, I'm so impressed with how you market your pocket. Like, because it's so oversaturated, you really have to be consistent, and you have to have great guests yeah. engaging. So, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I booked you. <laughs> uh, and you, you, you know, and you, you have to have, like, sizzle clips for social media, yeah. and, like, a lot goes well, jam, into Jam it. in the Van does... Like we just, this is all we do, and then it goes into their hands, and <clears throat> Beautiful. all these guys back here, they they, you know, scissor it together and social media, and and they're juggling a lot of uh, of stuff here. Have you done a show here, by the way? No, this is cool. Oh, so we, so they have. Have you been here before? Mm-mm. So see that room right there that they're actually renovating for a show tomorrow night. It's an indoor space that seats 150. Oh. And then there's an outdoor place that seats about 300, and then there's their van. Hence, jam in the van. Mm-hmm. And there's a recording studio inside of there, and every major artist has been in there, like hundreds, probably. That is so cool. And it's all on YouTube. Yeah, it's really cool space. This this used to be um, a rehab center. Okay. I don't know if you know that. So we're back. IPA. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> 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 but they do music and comedy. If you w- yeah. when we're done, you can walk around. Bill Burr, mm-hmm. Jeff Ross, Eliza Schlesinger, Ali Wong. Craig Roberts and Tiffany Haddis. Everybody was, well, not this space because they actually uh, expanded <clears throat> like right at, toward the end of COVID, but they had another space that was smaller. And so during the pandemic, every fucking comic was uh, Here. in there doing comedy. Yeah, wow. like, uh, like, yeah. Nightly. Well, I know, I recognize the name. No, this is cool. Yeah. It's nice having a studio. It's right? a fun space. Yeah. Well, Rather yeah, than yeah, yeah. Your place. Well, that was the whole thing is when we kind of collaborated, they were like, yeah, man, we have a studio. And how do you want to dress it? And I was like, well, the podcast is called Hollywood Tales. And they, they physically made this sign, which is kind of. It's, I love it. You know, makeshifty and cool and fucking. It's beautiful. It it's is beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> No, no, they made Don't it from scratch. Shit. No, I'm not talking shit. Yo, I'm not no, talking shit. I'm not talking it's shit like, for the record. Installation. I'm not talking shit. I like it. And so, this, yeah. Yeah, the and whole layout the, and is the, very and beautiful. And beautiful. You know, with floors. <coughs> I was telling... Got the dog. I was telling Marcus earlier, I said, you know, I, sh- I felt like I should have gotten the podcast industry years ago, and I, I always would say to myself, oh, podcasters are people who never made it, you know, in their 50s. And so I'm 51 doing a, <laughs> <laughs> doing a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, but it's maybe. fun because you. <clears throat> excuse me, I just spit. It's fun because you, you, you know, the the platform of having um, freedom of speech is very beautiful. And as a comic, I think that's why most of us do podcasts because yeah, we're all maybe you should men. be censored at times. But I yeah, mean, look at twenty two year old Blake over here. I know. I can't wish. grow a beard. Okay, cancel. You're podcasting. Okay, cancel <laughs> culture. Can't grow a beard. Okay, I've cancel. Been on it. Cancel woke culture. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it is. It is. I'm going to be 40, Creative. by the way, this month. Yeah, that's right. He's got a birthday wow. coming up. Wow. Send me Party. a bottle of justification if you want. Party yeah. at Blake's. Congratulations. Yeah. You made it. We'll see. I mean, I still got a couple <laughs> weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to Chicago this weekend. You never yeah. know. Yeah. So. Who knows what happens in Chicago? Oh, boy. Have you been to Chicago? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Because you're from, you're I, from Michigan. I'm, that's right from next Michigan door. And okay. Yeah, I would go to Chicago. Have you done the often. comedy bar? Uh, no, I haven't. I it's haven't really done a lot of um, road stuff. I'm I'm going to I'm going to be at Comedy Castle in Royal Oak at the end of the month. I've been there before. I'm doing like six shows there. Oh, really? Damn. Mm-hmm. Headlining? Uh, no, featuring. Oh, no, nice. for Craig. Nice. For Craig Mark Mark Ridley's Comedy Ma- Castle. Yes. They call it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've done that a couple times. So really looking forward to that. Nice. And that's awesome that I, Craig takes you. Yeah. You're with him a lot. Yes. Yeah, we work well together. Good. He's a good guy. When did you start working with him? Uh. I rated the pandemic. <coughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I That's took a date to see him at Brea Improv, probably 2014 or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I had never heard of him before then. He's fun. He's funny. I had never it's heard of him either. He's a quintessential road comic. He would hate to hear me say that. Uh, uh, but he's just like one of the, he just 
you know, he's the love, love master. The, the love yeah, master exactly. thing. He did it yeah. for like 25 yeah. minutes straight, and I was just right. my fucking I think cheeks he still hurt. Does it? Oh, and gets I'm away sure. with it, right? No, he needs to. That's he his does. thing. <laughs> well, That's you kind of have to. No, I think when when people people come out, they want to see you do a certain yeah. like play a certain song as a comic. Some people, some I've heard some comics like. Well, you could always tune it. that up. It's it's a more of a character act that you but can people, change. It's sort of like you know when you go to see a concert and you want to hear the greatest hits. And his demographic, the people that show up at his shows, they expect it. Right. Yeah. So he kind of has to do it. And I, like I don't want to be a feature for the rest of my life, but I've only been doing comedy for it will be six and a half years in. Um, in September. No, fall. that's that's impressive so, because you're already featuring for like a yeah, I like know, the, this legend is the comic. Phase I'm in right now, and I'm just trying to and is the enjoy like the journey. like travel, and, travel, lodging, all like paid for. Is the money good? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm probably not the best business person when it comes to that right now. I don't feel like I have a real like I should uh, have. I, that I, you know, I don't like, think I have Craig, a hard push. It's been like, six months, and I just you know I need a bump. <laughs> that would exactly. be funny. Like, but what like how do you exactly? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so you, you be grateful like, okay, to be on the road. <laughs> so that's so this is the day, and I don't no, negotiate too hard at this phase. But of you're the game. building a I fan base. <laughs> you're building a fan base under his umbrella of fans, which is great, right? Um, or is it vice versa? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs> no, I mean you know, Craig, if you're watching. <laughs> I would say that uh, right to his face. This is how we are. We are. I love Craig. He had me on his podcast yesterday, um, and he was just on mine. And you're going to be on mine. I am on the 24th. On the 24th. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is what we I'm do. We just, this, this is the this new is having comics coffee. Do. Comics just having yeah. coffee, catching up, and now we do it. Coffee <laughs> talk. <laughs> talk. Our podcast. But you drink what? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, is it? Do you drink on, on your podcast? Yes. Wine, right? Is it yes. only wine? No, you can drink whatever you want. Okay, and that no. was going to be my note to you. What do you, what do you I'll drink? I'll have whatever beverage what do ready you, for you. But what do you um, have? I have wine. All right, I'll probably just do the wine with you. Okay, I, I have some. Because I want to keep it like I want to keep it themey. You know I what like I mean? To, you know, talk about it. What we're drinking. <laughs> look, look at me. Look at me demanding. <laughs> I'll do what I want on your uh, podcast. I gave. This Make sure there's one, a steak. I gave him wine one time, and he bitched about it for like two days about how he was hungover and no, dying. No, here's really? the score. My wine is <laughs> here, what no, wine did you no, give no, him? No, no, Probably no. some menage a trois or whatever. Oh shit! That's all sugar, baby. Here's the score. Ready? If I drink wine all night and only drink wine all night, I'm good. Yeah. <clears> what it. what I cannot and I, or I can drink wine like at dinner, and then I go into like drinking, right? But if I'm like drinking and my jam is like you know Stella and tequila, right? Kind of like back and forth a little bit. Okay, I love tequila right now. If if I if I drink wine yeah. after that at the end of the night, that's when I get clobbered. Okay. So I can't touch red wine after I've been sipping on tequila and fucking crushing Stellas all night. I don't know anyone who can. <laughs> well, he's seen me. Med. <laughs> no, he, he, no, he's, he's actually. I've been. I literally was like at his place under the covers, going, <gasps> "Give me." A, I think you had COVID, to be honest. So I'm gonna uh, be no, no, I had a hangover. Is what <laughs> it was. Fucking West Nile virus or something. <laughs> West no, because no, because you're drinking all that sugar after you've been drinking like white Dude, tequila. It's just not a good mix. I dust a bottle a night. No yeah, problem. but not before you've had six shots of tequila and five, six beers. I doubt it. So you, this is a drinker's crew right here. We're, we drink. We're all, you drink too, Marcus. You know. I, I like to drink. I didn't drink because I'm I'm driving today, but yeah. Really? That's you know, fantastic. there's a full bar upstairs. That comes I told you, it's the next rehab center. That's nice. <laughs> That's, I love you know that irony. You know, what, you know what's literally next door connected to this building? An Islamic mosque. I saw that. Did you? Uh, did you I was, I was like, you? is that where the podcast is? <laughs> <laughs> Should have been. <laughs> I was like, Ahmed, Ahmed. <laughs> Ahmed, Ahmed. <laughs> like, la, 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 la. <laughs> oh my god! Like, oh, she, am I dressed appropriately? You walk in, cover somebody your th- face. Somebody throws a sheet <laughs> over your head. <laughs> I got really excited for a second. I'm not gonna uh, lie, that would have been unique. I was saying they should Fun. just bust a hole through the wall so it connects, and you can just people can go back and forth. And you want to convert? Go for it. You know, you don't. And there you are with your and, beard, your, or your, with your beard yeah. and your beard, and your hosting. <laughs> No. That would that would win for most originality of any podcast reality, in the world on reality, the globe. Reality. Actually, that would uh, morph into MTV would be knocking on your door. 
wanting to make e e not MTV. I do at one say. point with the guys, Justin maybe or Wolf or whoever, and just take like one camera and just do like a little documentary thing where, you know, I walk in there and, <clears throat> you know, check the place out. Maybe do a little Islamic prayer. I think that's such a great you know idea. What I mean? and then is it just me? I think this is so and great. Then, and then come back in and fucking. <laughs> well, that was nice. <laughs> Will you please? Fantastic. I could. Uh, or I do may that I first. Produce it. <laughs> want to produce it? And direct it too, <laughs> for sure. Um, let's circle back on you. But back to me. Back to you. <clears throat> So you have a manager or an agent, or you don't? I do. Kind of. I have a whole team of people who just don't want to do anything <laughs> but say they're my team. All they do is, like, they say they're my team, and they come to all my shows and recruit talent. Right. I heard, were I've they seen in that. your face? Yeah. Um, my, so who, my who, agents. Who's, who's your, the, the twins? Oh, my God. I have, and I don't I even, never I don't even give a them. shit if they hear this. Okay, I have two, <laughs> two right. identical twin agents, and it's sort of like, you know the sketch comedy drunk girl that you wish you never started a conversation with at a party. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, those are my agents, except they're two. <laughs> and yeah, like, I, I they're both them. your agent. <laughs> like yeah, the twins. Them. Remember them? Yeah, I didn't see that they were twins. The, the, the chicks who were kind of heck, not heckling, but they were. When I said any Middle Eastern people in the mm-hmm. audience at the lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, "We're half." And mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, they're like, and then they're twins." And I was like, "Oh, together you're one." And we were like going back and forth. It turns out. The, that's her. Those are her agents, but they I, they because came up. That's afterwards. the stage of the career of my career. Why right are now. both of them your <laughs> agents? So I like. That's, no, that's they're cool. very cool that's during cool. the day, but they like to they like to tie one on at my shows and then recruit the talent in the lineup. So great. Do they, do they it makes work, me feel real good. Do they work for you? <laughs> Um, like what do you like aud- like acting auditions? Like what do they do technically? I have no idea what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Are they really agents? Is what I'm saying. Did you sign a contract know, with both of them? I know I'm on their IMDb. <laughs> they're on mine. Like, I, it's, my representation is such a mess right now. Such a mess. Who's your manager? Uh, Andy Rooney from Midwest Talent. And he, we, was, he wasn't there that night. He wasn't there, and I, I signed with him about three weeks ago. I so feel like I've, I've heard of him. I, I feel Rooney. like I'm in good where, yeah, we, we have a plan. Mm. We have a plan. You need a team, though. Like yeah. I have I have a, a print agent with CESD, yeah. Carol Scott. She's awesome, and we, we do well together. And um, But you, like you need, a, you need a, an agent in New York and an agent in right. Uh, in Atlanta. And, and what about the social and media? A, and, and a social media manager, right. and you need a personal appearance manager that books shows for you. You probably but you're have ta- that. I don't have, I don't have anything. <clears throat> I don't have an agent, manager. I've been told that I was uh, unmanageable. <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> you know who told me that? You know Rick Siegel? You've made, I sure do. He, he was at your show. That's, yeah, that's why yes. we connected with him. <laughs> So I've known him he forever. He's a lot of my shows. He was a, he's a super nice guy. He I, is. He's like a kind of like Rep, a. I have industry come to my shows. I don't invite them. I don't know what he, they want. He, I, don't know. I, I haven't seen him in like no he's joke really like nice. twenty years, and he's just like really kind of big, like older, like Jewish guy, and he's a big dude. <clears throat> and you're like, I met him at Rick Siegel, and I was like, Oh hey man, because I haven't seen you forever. And he's like, Yeah, yeah. We, we exchanged numbers, and then we talked. And he was like, so what do you, like, what do you want to do? What do you want? And I was like, well, you know, I want to accomplish this, da 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 this, da that. And he goes, so what do you need me for? I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're unmanageable. And I just thought, that was so weird. That doesn't really make sense. <clears throat> what no, do you it's need like, I, I, have, I have all these, like, things going on, and I, can you help me, like, you know, open doors and connect Book and resource? Yeah, and just yeah. any, all that. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> well, he texts me the next morning about you. Of course he did. What did he yeah. say? Uh, no. Spill it. Joking. No, he said you were funny. He said, he, he said you know, I'll he stay went, in touch he went with through him. who he thought was funny. Oh. So, and you well, were one of them. There you go, people. If you think I'm funny, you can <laughs> go, go, go to my Instagram, <laughs> at Ahmed Ahmed Comedy. Message book Sarah me. that Ahmed Just was DM funny. me. Sarah gets 10% <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> What's that? No, he wasn't being lazy. Like he, I, he's a very res- respected guy in the industry. He, he just, is, I really. think he was just sort of like, past. "What do you want to do?" And you know, I told him like, "I'm not trying to audition. Like, I'm not auditioning." Like, remember we talked about yeah. at, Marcus was a very affluent 
<coughs> actor back in the day. He was on Doogie Howser and yeah. did some movies and I stuff. But now he he pivoted way. into writing and 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 that kind of thing, directing and all that. And so I'm kind That's of smart. in that place in my life where I'm like, do I want to spend five hours a day memorizing lines, putting myself on tape, calling somebody to come tape me, like? To put yourself on tape these days, it it, it takes oh, hours all sometimes. Day. Yeah. Especially if you have like a lot of dialogue. It's true. And and it kill it literally kills half your fucking day. Sometimes your whole day. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Being prepared. So I was like, um, mm, unless you're reader. offering me the part, I'm passing. Well, it's different. Like you know, when we were coming up, it was different. Like, well, you went to the we, casting we went office. To the room. You physically went in, yeah. And then all we had to focus on was being prepared with yeah. the role. And now yeah. Like, now we have to be filmmakers. <laughs> they don't have enough followers on Instagram. Yes. Right. That's really and common. Like, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, and I that's for like guest yeah. star. Yeah. Not right. even series regular. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was blown yeah. away when I heard that. It's yeah. just, it's, it is. It's like, <clears> it's, like the, the it's effort, really disheartening. Yes. Yeah, because what so has this become? Involved. What happened to just being really great at the craft yeah. and go, being classically trained? That doesn't mean anything. It's funny. Um, so when social media kind of came around, right? Some act like some already movie stars <clears throat> bought into it, like Will Smith and like you know some of like the older actors, maybe here and there. Like I don't know if Tom Cruise is really a, on social media and all that, but. Yeah. Yeah, he Doesn't has, have to go. but he has But he has people. people running it, right? But like The Rock, Kevin Hart, <laughs> like it became like social media became like the new th right. the new thing, the new black, right? You need to like right. come in hot or or not. Right. And um Vince, we've this is our thinker. This is our third podcast. We've been talking about Vince Vaughn. His name comes up a lot cuz that's how we met technically. Oh, okay. And he was a guest on your show, I saw. He did a he did a virtual, yeah. And you've been on the road together. And yeah. You have, like, a rich history. Yeah. Like, yeah. Other. Vince is, like, one of my my old pals and old friends. And um, and <clears throat> he just started a podcast uh, with Greg Olson. Do you know Greg Olson? Ex-tight end for the Tennessee Titans. And oh, cool. His partner is Ryan Khalil, who was an ex-lineman like -like for the North Panthers. Carolina Panthers. Thank you, sir. And, and Greg Olson was a North Carolina Panther. Mm. Well, he was a Tennessee Titan at the end. Oh, Google it. Oh, boy. Mm -mm. Okay, oh. Well. I do nothing but fantasy football. 1,000%. Oh, oh, that's nerdy. <laughs> he was uh, a that's Carolina like a, Panther. That's like playing and Dungeons went, and Dragons, bro. <laughs> he didn't go to the Titans. <laughs> he said it with such conviction. I'm joking. So resolute. Okay, anyway. I'm not challenge him. They started a podcast together that Vince's company is, like, helping launch, like, in this whole thing. It's a whole thing. Sports, kids, coaching kids. It's a more, like, kid, like, about how children are influenced by sports and that kind of shit. Um, so I was helping Vince kind of help get the awareness out. And I said, why don't you, like, I know you're not, he doesn't have any social media, zero. Oh, well, like, he blank. doesn't, does he need it? No, he doesn't need it's it. It's funny that you say that because, so I said to him, you know, why don't you just, like, open a couple of accounts and have, like, your, somebody run it, you know, in your company just run it and have them, like, like fan accounts. Like like Donald Trump. Like have your people, you know, yeah. <laughs> type what you want to say. But you don't Donald have to, Trump was saying you don't have shit. to physically. He was saying it, but he wasn't typing it. He probably was. Uh, no, he had he had he had people he had people around him. But anyway, and um, <clears throat> I said, you know, it'll up your aware. You're like you know, not that you need it, but because it's funny. He he actually doesn't need social media. Like he's still relevant, right? But I was like, if you want to like up it. Why don't you get into the social media game? And he goes to me, oh, no, babe, you know how I do it. I just show up. Yeah. No. When <laughs> I mean, he's been fun. And do what he wants. have that resume. No, but he also that has IMDb. that He also has that confidence Pain. and, like, charisma. He's like, you know how I do it, babe. I just show up. Yeah. Like, it, it was a very I, kind of, like, <laughs> elo him. eloquent way of saying, I'm just going to put out good work as an actor. Yeah. Because he can, and and hopefully that'll keep me afloat, and it has, man. God yeah. bless. He's still he's still doing it. So it can also destroy a, an established actor as well. Yeah, and it you has. Know, if they're not, if they're uh, not careful, with, like yeah, you know, a lot of actors Tyrese? that didn't need that didn't need social media. You see Tyrese any way to augment their ego. You see Tyrese? No. You know who Tyrese is? No. Exactly. 
<laughs> Tyrese from Fast and the Furious. He's oh, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. He's like what, what black. He was a model, good-looking black, yeah. like okay. singer model. But he's been in a couple. Like he's in the Fast we and the Furious. What together, happened to him? Actually, he got on social yeah, media I and like I, I don't know, bro. I, he had a. I think yeah. he had a couple. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do. From New York. She's we like, you should have said his last name. I would have known. Tyrese Gibson. I guess is it Gibson? But he used to just go by Tyrese. No, he went by Tyrese just for a second, like Prince. Start with a B. I'm thinking of the model. You're talking about Are they not this? Oh, oh, right. No, I'm mixing the two up because I'm talking about the no, same. No, Gibson. Yeah, yeah. Fast and the, the Furious. Tyson. Fast Tyson and the Furious. And that's what I'm We've had some model. moments together. Yes. <laughs> Tyrese right. Okay, all right. Oh, Tyrese. Oh, yeah, I'm anyway. anyway oh. Tyrese. Valid. Tyrese Gibson went on social media and, like, he posted a couple videos, like, kind of melting down on some shit. Mm. And I, I don't think it hurt him, but, like, you know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, like when people I, I, get uh, too personal. No, he was like crying, and it was just like sure. I was just like, eh, come on, man. You're, but at the same time, here's the fine line. But then people go, he was vulnerable. Exactly, really because you do have to get raw. World. People want to feel like they're was, what looking at a real person. I don't want to see it. No. I don't. Well, but in comedy, you no, know, no, no. Take it. To, go to the stand up comedy. No, you don't want to see real. Either go on stage or get a therapist. Like, where do, I don't want to want. I don't want. But don't you want to feel when the comic leaves the stage that you know who they are? Like they have a point of view. Yeah, but Tyrese wasn't funny. Okay, I don't like know comics, this guy. So. Comics are making. Well, you said you met him in New York. No, I got him mixed up. With oh, Tyson. the model. Oh, you too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, they're they're both. I swear it was in my head. It was the same person, but they, it wasn't. They, yeah. They, Kind of similar. No, no, not that. No, they actually do look. I think dimples. Eight pack. I can't remember. We'll have to pull him. Well, anyway, if we can, we can make a note and pull him up. So you don't like when people get too sappy on their. Um, I I try not to. No, look, look. I don't want. I don't want to say that. That I don't like it. I'm just. I don't want to (sighs) like. There's an old Bruce Lee saying, and I'm going to paraphrase it. When you talk about negativity. You you take it, it you embody it. Yeah, you manifest words it. are spells. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That's, why they, that's why they call it spelling. Yeah, spelling. Something like that. Spellbound. But I, I I I appreciate when a you know a person like wants to spill their guts to the world, but like I think just some things are better left unsaid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> tread you carefully, know? right? Because you can really destroy yeah. yourself in a hundred forty characters word. or less. <laughs> Michael Words. No ambient at night, you know? Michael like I'm <laughs> <laughs> Michael R- Michael Richards destroyed his career with one word. One night in mm, Hollywood. He kinda lost yeah. Yeah, I mean, But he said I know it what I'm saying. it was the one word right. that he said fifty thousand times within a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, I counted. <laughs> I counted it was it was fifty. Um gosh, what do I want to ask you? You guys have any questions? We, we any, have to... do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't well, you come on it? Yeah, you want to come with the Meta Med? We can do it Great. together. Yeah. Do you have three typically? I, I have, yeah, I have really? four. I have four mics. Oh, Let's I, do I it always, on the twenty fourth. It, it always looks like you only are doing one on one. Well, because I have the I way you have shoot my it, maybe? camera set up. Oh. Exactly. Okay, yeah, we should all yeah, maybe we all do on it. On the twenty fourth, everybody's invited. I have the wine. Um, we talk about your fascinating life over a great bottle of wine. Oh. So it's pretty simple. And uh <laughs> Are you or, kidding me? Or you said whatever I we can drink. I have known you for five minutes, and you're. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, you're you're you, you were on Doogie Howser, and you know was a model. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying. Are we still talking about Tyrese? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> no, but Tyrese was also a model no, at some point. <laughs> no, they do look. They so, do look but very. What about him? What did he do? Similar. He's so no longer. This one? Okay. Nothing. I know this guy. Ahmed didn't oh, like yeah, his yeah. rant. No, this no. guy and I. That's yeah. That's the guy we know each other. Oh. Did you sleep together? I, we did not. Like, he, he was, he w- I wasn't that lucky. He was sleeping with my friend. Oh. Did he yes. enter the RV? And, but I, I, I <laughs> okay, spent time so with him, and he's a nice person. I do remember this. Which one? Oh, that's, that, yeah. See, that's Texas. Okay, yeah. Right, and the other and one is, is Tyrese. Right. That's Tyson, Tyrese. Oh, I don't think they look anything alike. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Nothing. So you guys basically are generalizing, know. Marcus, you're He's generalizing black people. No, I did. I guess I did. I you know. did, Blake. What, he just got sappy? What did he do? He just got... <coughs> if you... If you <coughs> excuse me. This was a couple... <coughs> excuse me. This was a couple years ago. 
subjective. He he went on a he went on. A, you want to hear something funny? Will Smith actually came to his safety, is what uh, I remember. That's ironic. Him and Jada like okay. supported him in some way. I don't know, but he he got an emotional over over something on social media, and it was just it's criticized. You know, mm. I didn't criticize it. Like I didn't type a comment, but in my head I was like, mm, I probably would have saved that for my therapist. You have a therapist? It's no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I've done therapy. Have you? Yeah, I, I, I like can, therapy. I they, can tell. They, 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 they fire me. <laughs> they don't show up for sessions. <laughs> my therapist hates me. I can't keep one. They move away. They move out of town <laughs> with no trace, no trail. I can't find them. It's like they just completely vanish. Is that a bit? You don't it's talk about, you really put true. Have I mean, <laughs> you put that on stage? I haven't. You should. No. You should put that on stage. That's funny. Oh, he hates me. <laughs> just, no, no, if I talk about him on stage, seconds. he's going to try to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> do you date it's anybody really, really currently? I do, yeah. What's his name? I don't say names. <laughs> <laughs> is he white? Uh, he is a man of color. He's a black guy? Uh, he's not a Spray black guy. Spray tan? <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood too. What uh what is he of what ethnicity is he? Uh I really don't want to say. Damn. All right, we will cut this Super out of the secret. podcast. No, you can keep it in. I mean, okay, here's where I am with this. I was in a relationship for three and a half years. We broke up. We were very like vocal about our love for one another visually, vocally, it was all over social media. And it's we embarrassing. Broke up. It was fucking you gotta delete all that fucking all those pictures. Exactly. Yeah. And it just it felt really it, it was it was it all those pictures that are all like we're so in love was, and then like, people are like ah yeah, God, <laughs> exactly. It's like oh I guess that's gonna work. And it takes a long time to delete all those pictures. It does and it's like the love of my life is was not one of the today. Posts. It's like okay now like he hates me. It's hard to go back and he's, even look at him he's to delete proceeding him. Proceeding with his life as if I have died. I, and, and Sometimes so you got to do that. He, <laughs> he and my therapist. What? I'm a nice woman, really. <laughs> What'd um, you do? Uh, <laughs> I broke up with him. Exactly. That's what I did. So I, uh, because it just it was it was really good until it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And so what I've what I learned with that relationship is I just want to be private, really private, moving forward. I feel you. I respect you know? that. Yeah. So, <coughs> are they twins or? Like <laughs> it's a spray tan. Um, <laughs> let's uh, we're running out of time over here at the Hollywood Tales podcast we try to keep everything under an hour oh, we're over, uh, we're over. so we're, we're going to wrap it up uh, what do you want to plug and then tell us your best Hollywood Tale um, I have a, a monthly show at the improv Hollywood improv the lab called Bottle Shock and I've I have, done it it's a lot of fun uh, yeah it's a, that was such a great line I love that line it was fun and I have a podcast, Drinking During Business Hours. I also have a comedy special on Amazon <coughs> Prime called RVs and Cats. I have an album that you can find on Spotify, iTunes, and Deezer. Did you know there was a Deezer? Ooh. There's a Deezer. Really? Yeah, okay. and, I, and I'm on it. D- okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's on that Deez. D-E-E-Z-E-R? Oh I'm on Deezer, man. Yeah, D-E-E-Z-R. Deezer. It's a thing. It's a thing. All right. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Well, Sarah Halstead. <coughs> <clears throat> Tell us your best Hollywood tale. Uh, okay, it could be anything. Something Hollywood related that's funny, dark, weird, scary, fucked up, anything. Um, shoot, I should have prepared for this. <laughs> I thought uh, I, I, thought I he didn't tell you. you. Yeah, I he did. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get the memo. <clears throat> oh, uh, I'm sorry. The title <laughs> kind of fucking tales. says it all. And as I walked in, I'm like, um, was I supposed to prepare anything for Hollywood tales? Uh, it could be anything. It could be like just your favorite, funny, cool, cuckoo, f- crazy story. Uh, well, um, I hung out in Will Smith's trailer for about four hours. This is going to be was... great. Can we keep the cameras? <gasps> can we keep the <laughs> cameras rolling for another time? Well, he was filming downtown LA about three years ago, and uh, what's really interesting, and I know he has a lot of backlash. Um, he was uh, with my friend. 
they had been uh, very, very close friends for about 10 years. I'm sorry, which movie was this? Uh, that, you know what? I don't remember what movie it was. It didn't oh. get good ratings, though. He does like was three he, movies wasn't, a year. It wasn't was, a he, good, was he a big star at this yeah, point? Yeah, he was the lead. Oh, yeah, what? this was like, just three what? years ago. Oh, three years ago. Three years ago. <laughs> and so I'm invited to his trailer. The trailer was nicer than my apartment. <laughs> it was so goddamn nice. And it was like he has champagne and he doesn't even drink. And the champagne was everywhere and fruit and cheese and chocolate. And why are you there? It was How a luxury. Like he, he is really good friends with my friend and he invited us to hang out in this Ooh. trailer. And it was late. It was, you know, like midnight. And we had had dinner, um, my friend and I. Your friend's and, uh, a girl. Uh, yep, a girl. A beautiful woman. And, uh, and... <laughs> And so he invited us to the trailer, and there were people. It was Jada's brother was in the trailer, and um, Jada? and a couple friends. Jada wasn't there. Of course, she wasn't. Um, a couple friends were in the trailer, and and we were really having great stimulating mm. conversation. Oh, great stimulating conversation. It was really a lot of fun. And um, Will Will wasn't in the trailer. He was still filming. And while we're talking in this very engaged conversation, and it was just so cool. The vibe was really cool. While we were talking, we heard footsteps, and you could just feel this whoosh of a presence. And we all just stopped. And we just knew it was Will Smith. And he walked in the door, and he was just like, you know, he just exude like you felt him before you saw him. That is what a movie star he is. Whoa. I wonder if Chris Rock felt him before he slapped him. <clears throat> I, I think he did. What we all that? saw the look on his face <laughs> while mean, he was approaching what him. What the fuck movie was he filming? Hancock. And, and well, he and this was great. So and he was the just, pursuit of happiness. I mean, I, there's been. So, I am legend. It was, it was. It didn't get. It didn't do well. I remember that. And the director yeah, was. Yeah, it was not called happy. fucking Hancock. It, the, no, that the, was the a director, great movie. The director was huh? not happy. That with was him. a great movie. It didn't make money. And, wow. and we talked till like three a.m. We were there for so long, just like the great conversation, just talking about he life. He was there with you, and he and with with us. Yes. Yeah, so there were was, like four of us. Oh, it's probably hit. Was he wrapped was in for New the York. night? He was wrapped for the night, and he just hung out. And he just hung out. Apparently, he likes to do that when he's on set mm. um, to kind of I don't know maybe that, wind down. Come down. Or That's what comics do. Yeah. When, when yeah, comics exactly. come off a show, we want to have a drink. And the conversation was so great. And, and he gave me a bear hug goodbye, and he said in my ear, you are wonderful. I'm sure he says it to everyone. Ooh. And I tell you, that's the when, when you know, as, as an entertainer, as you're accumulating fans and cultivating and growing your fan base, he's a great, ex- exceptional, like, you know. Politician. Th- that is exactly, he makes he's everyone the in the room feel, like they're, feel the like they're the only person there. How close did he hug you? And really tightly. Okay, well. It felt really good. Here we have it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know with all this shit going on, I just, and, and, and I don't agree with what he did, obviously, but he. By the way, when he did he that. He is a star. He's for sure a star. I love Will Smith. I, I still love him. I always will, but. You can't, you know, be slapping comics. Absolutely not. It was appalling. It's just a no. Just, that's a no fly zone. Was, I, I don't care more, who the fuck more, you are. More than disturbing, and I wrote it was about it publicly within an I did hour too. after it happened. A lot of people did. But doesn't, no, doesn't no, the Oscars I screen I all the jokes? Of, I think a lot of people waited. They waited. They were too chicken shit to voice their opinion. They waited like a lot of high profile people waited a good eight hours before they yeah, voiced. I didn't. Maybe that, they were that night. You need, it. you need time to process. I mean, whether it was fake or not. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, that could have been I, it. I do but. think this, and we, and we can we can wrap it up. But I will say this about that relationship: I believe in, uh, you know, couples when they get really intertwined. I feel like, and it's typically, and I don't want to be or sound like misogynistic or whatever, but. I feel like typically if a woman wants to witchcraft her man, she can. Mm. And I think she witchcraft him. She played some fucking she voodoo shit. Kong him? She Nasi Kong Konged him. <laughs> <clears throat> you ever heard the story or joke about Nasi Kong Kong? <laughs> no. <laughs> people, if you ever... It sounds like a banshee from Ireland. People, if you, are, <laughs> if you go on YouTube and just uh, YouTube <laughs> Ahmed Ahmed Nasi Kong Kong, this is a real thing I learned in Asia. It takes place all over the world. Women will, and I'll keep it short, but women like to put some of their like bodily fluids. Don't you think you're being a little man's... stereotypical? Uh, like all Google women, it. I've never put shit in my man's. This is a witchcraft thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not like a. You haven't yet. That's yeah, why you might. That's why you're not married. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just that's, that's why you're not married. <laughs> 
No, there's I a, need there, some lessons from there's these a, women. Listen, there's a movie. He's going to tell you all no, about there's it. A movie, tell me where to Google. There's a, <laughs> there's a movie. Right this podcast. There's a movie that was made in Malaysia called Nasi Kong Kong. Nasi means rice. Kong Kong means legs spread apart. And what the women do is if they want to keep their man, because some most men, like, you know, they're looking at other women, they're flirting, they're, there's infidelity involved. If you want to keep your man, they, like, steam white rice <clears throat> in the white rice cooker, mm-hmm. and then they squat over the rice naked, and they let the steam, oh, like, I rise up. I have done this. I have. See? I've done and then it. The, and yeah. then the, she steamed her vagina. I have. The, I do the V steam at Hugh Spa. And then the and then the and then the, and then the vine. It, no, but then but then the. Vag- I was just talking about this on a podcast yesterday. See? Yeah, V steam. See now the, oh, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> but did you the let bodily? Steam? Let, let me finish. You, let me let me just drive my point home. <laughs> the bodily fluids, Sarah. The bodily fluids drip back down into the rice, and then they mix oh. it up. And they feed it to their man. This is a real thing. When he takes a bite, he turns into a zombie. He gets nasi kong kong. Justin, if you have, I I have a clip on YouTube. If we could pull that up and take a note to implement that. You you don't have to. Anyhow, (laughs) no, because because I do a joke about. I did the joke in Malaysia in front of two thousand people, and they were screaming, crying, laughing because it's a real thing. So. When I saw the Will Smith thing, you, you know he ate the rice. He fucking ate the rice, bitch. <laughs> nah. So listen, look. So he goes. I'm gonna be going to Hugh Spot. Will after this. Smith. Will Smith is laughing at the joke, and he's like, right, whatever. Jada gave him the nasi kong kong, <laughs> and he went like this. Do you do that? No, you should. But I will. But this then he. Great. But then he got up. Like a zombie. It was a, the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen him. Like an alien. It was a real robotic movement. And he kind of like robotically walked up to Chris. And even the way he slapped him, it was like, you know, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a, like a real slap. It was like a ghetto slap. He went like, it was like a weird, I don't know. It was too organized of a slap. It looked fake. like a, like it looked a little fake. From Ali, the movie. And then he came back down. And yeah, he was a great boxer in that. Yeah, he was, was like, great. Well, he knows how to box. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, sure. I will say this, and I, and we can end it here. I love Will Smith. Like I said, I always will. I think he had a moment in his time in life that, and even Denzel Washington said it during the Oscars. He's like, "Don't you know when you're at your greatest moment, that's when the devil comes, right?" Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I think he was at his greatest moment, and here comes fucking Jada Pinkett Smith. That bitch is, she's got a weird fucking devil thing about her. Well, you know well, all their background, right? Like her, like, you know, yeah. their open relationship I type know, thing. It's all fucking, look, I'm not saying he's perfect Scientology. either. Scientology. I'm not saying he's perfect either, but I think They're she, pretty hands-on, Scientology. No, I know that. I slap a lot of people in that they're place, all in, They're heard. all in that. They're all involved. <laughs> slap a lot of people. <laughs> There's a documentary. The guy gets really slappy, the leader. <laughs> Whatever, slappy. watch the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's where Will got it. That's what I'm saying. So right. there you go, folks. <laughs> Don't eat Scientologists the rice. get a little slap. Don't eat the rice. <laughs> That's a great Will Smith Hollywood tale. Yep. Marcus, any last remarks? This is your first time. This is your third time on our. This, yeah, it's my first time. He's he's been on. He, we, we did one on one, and then he sat in on this one and the one before. It's a good dynamic. So now you're co-hosting. I see. I feel. I feel the juju. Yeah, there was a whole, there's a whole bar I upstairs. Wish I passed. <laughs> Blake, any last words? That's it. We got to roll. <clears throat> All right, guys. Go to Ahmed Ahmed Comedy, A H M E D, twice. Uh, comedy, that's my Instagram. That's where I post all our upcoming dates and shows. Go to sarahjhalstead.com. And, and Instagram? And my Instagram is Sarah Halstead. Nice. And then, Marcus, one more time, please. Oh, uh, At Blake Bar T Comedy. Thanks to Jam in the Van. Come check this place out. 3384 Motor Avenue between um, Pico and Venice Boulevard. Live music, live comedy. It's 420 friendly. They drink, they smoke, they have fun, they party here. <clears throat> and uh, Justin, thank you so much. Thanks to um, Dave Bell, uh, Jake Kotler, Jake Trainer, our creative director, Jack Higgins, and Wolf Ramirez. We are out. Thank Sweet. You.